my first novel is called Learning to Swim, which is kind of a metaphor for what I did. I been learning to swim through life, but it won the uh, Anthony Award for Best First Novel, the Agatha for Best First Novel, and the Mary Higgins Clark Award. And I wrote a sequel, which I'd already always planned, and it's called A Cold and Lonely Place. And I hope to write quite a few more. I was born in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, um, which was part of the Manhattan Project. And uh, I moved up to the Adirondacks in 84 um, to work at the uh, Adirondack Daily Enterprise for my first full-time reporting job. And uh, I now live in southern Vermont, but uh, part of me is kind of always here in the Adirondacks. I was the third child, and uh, I always say I was the third child in a two-child family, uh, kind of older parents. And uh, I, for some reason, was in a very big bedroom where there were lots and lots of books and an electric typewriter stored. Um, and I always said that's kind of the perfect way to, uh, how do you create a writer? You kind of leave her alone in a room with a lot of books and a typewriter. And that's exactly what happened. I read a lot and taught myself to type and became a writer. I think I sort of always wanted to write a novel. I actually started one when I was 12, and I still have it. It's an old composition book. And I got as far as setting up the character and the story arc, and then it got hard, and I stopped. But I started out working for newspapers and magazines, and I, and I, I just finally had to do it. I just had the novels in me, and I just finally sat down and did it. I used to live in the Adirondacks, and I was back up visiting and driving along Lake Champlain on a, on a misty overcast day. And there's a place in Lake Champlain where it's, there's two ferries. There. It's an hour crossing, so there's two that could conceivably pass. And for some reason, I just envisioned a woman on one ferry on a deck on this misty day seeing what she thought was a child fall from the other ferry, and what would she do? And I was probably about a year later, I sat down to write a novel, and that was my opening chapter. That scene just stayed with me and became the opening for my novel, and I had to figure out who was this woman and who was this boy and what next and how to write a novel, but that's how I started. I would say the primary obstacle to writing the novel was me. It was my head. And I actually wrote the first novel very fast because so that little voice that says, you can't do this, what do you think you're doing, you don't know what you're doing, I could ignore that voice. And that's why my first novel I had to do a lot of rewriting on because the middle I just kind of rushed through. So I would say a supreme lack of self-confidence was the number one obstacle. And uh, you can only overcome that however you do. And I just pushed myself through it. I was living in Nashville at the time and made myself join a local writing group. And there was a woman there, um, Meg Wake Clayton and her husband, Mac. And they were both very encouraging. And, and she'd had a short story published, I think, at that point. And she was the one that, th I wrote the novel, parts were good, parts were bad, it went in a drawer. It stayed there. Because when you don't have a lot of self-confidence, that's kind of what you do, you shove things away. And it kind of kept nagging at me. But Meg encouraged me to apply for the Squaw Valley Writers Conference out in California. And uh, I would say she is the reason, simply by that and one email telling me to, to apply for that. Uh, it kind of changed the course of my life. At the conference, I found out what I needed to know, which was, yes, my book was worth working on. So I, I rewrote it, um, found an agent, found a publisher. It comes out, um, up for some awards. I, I think none of the, the success idea doesn't really sink in until I was at one of the awards. And, and won it, and you hear your name called out, and you walk up to that podium, and you accept the award. And it, I will tell you, it is an astounding feeling that you did it. Um, the other thing is fan mails. You get emails from people. I get a number of emails from people who say, I've never written an author before, but. And that's, that's an amazing feeling that your book touched someone so much that they, they sat down and wrote you an email. And that's kind of what it's all about, I think, when you write books, is getting through to somebody. I think being successful means doing something that makes your heart sing, doing whatever it is you love to the best of your ability. I would say my best piece of advice for young girls or old women, either one, um, believe in yourself. Don't let anyone tell you you're not worthwhile. Don't let anyone convince you that you're not important. Find your voice, use your voice, believe in yourself.